So for the month of August I obviously have uh, a big turnover from July that I already mentioned with Jane Austen July. One book that I finished already in August now is The Odyssey by Homer. I will do a separate video on this just like I will on the Iliad eventually. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about this anymore. This was a buddy read with Mark from Words Words Everywhere. I also was buddy reading The Magic Mountain der Zauberberg by Thomas Mann with uh, a bunch of booktubers, again links down below, and I only read the first three chapters so far which about roughly equals 100 pages of this 760 page book. So I think it's safe to say that this will take me not only through August but probably also through September to finish. This is the story of Hans Castor who travels into a sanatorium into the mountains before World War I and involuntarily stays there for an extended period of time. It was also Jeeves July in, well, July, and I did read some PG Roadhouse for this. Uh, this was organized again by Mark from Words Words Everywhere. And I read this bind up, uh, The World of Jeeves contains the inimitable Jeeves, Carry On Jeeves and Very Good Jeeves, so three cho short story collections plus two extra short stories. The one that I read in July was the Inimitable Jeeves, <laughs> try saying that ten times fast, and I'm in the middle of Carry On Jeeves. Uh, those were two books that were supposed to be read in July, but that didn't happen. Um, I'm gonna take these slow throughout August, maybe into September. I'm very, very much enjoying them. They are delightful, they are witty, they are wonderful and funny, and it's just comfort reading. But they do have sort of a formulaic structure, so they get a bit repetitive if you would read them all in a very, very short period of time, I would argue. So I'm gonna take these a bit slower. I picked up Joy in the Morning and The Code of the Woosters for uh, Jeeves July as well, but uh, those will have to wait. <laughs> then there is a group read organized by Sarah from Hardcover Hearts and Juan from Just Juan Reader and that is a group read for The Goldfinch. If you are interested in joining I don't think it's too late. It goes from August till roughly mid-September when the movie comes out and I've never read anything by Donna Tartt and it's about time so uh, yeah. I'm excited for this one. August is also, um, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, uh, August is also the Classic-thon, which is run by Lucy the Reader, and basically my leftovers, if you will, from Jane Austen July, also the Magic Mountain and so on, they all qualify for that. So I am sort of participating, I guess. And then it's also August in Africa, which is organized by uh, Mike from the Post Postmodern Prognosticator, and Rasmika from Rasmika Likes Books. And Rasmika, if you're watching, please tell me if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, because I think I've seen you pronounce it like this once, but I feel like everybody else says Rasmika, so please tell me if I'm doing it wrong. But uh, I want to at least uh, read one book for that, and that will be In the Country of Man by Hisham Mata. Uh, he's a Libyan writer, and this is set in the late 1970s in Libya, and it's basically the coming of age story of Suleiman. And uh, I started this earlier this year, really enjoyed it, but uh, got sidetracked with other readings. So I'm probably just gonna start again at the beginning. I will also try to do my <laughs> review that I still need to do for Stay With Me by Ayubami Adebayo uh, and the African Writers Tech during uh, Africa, uh, August in Africa. And <laughs> because this is not enough uh, with readathons, like seriously, they're all happening in the summer for some reason, as was the reading wash, by the way, which I was too busy to participate in, but I loved like seeing people's videos about it. And August is also Women in Translation Month and there is a Women in Translation readathon which is uh, hosted by Matthew Schrapper and Kendra Winchester and um, the, it runs in the last week of August. Now I'm probably gonna read these books throughout August uh, because uh, I don't have the whole a week in August where I can read. There's three prompts. Well, there's two bonus prompts with specific titles, but I don't own these, so I'm going to skip them. Uh, the first prompt is read a book with the translator credited on the book cover. I don't have any unread books that credit the translator on the cover, which is like publishers get on with that. The second prompt, though, is to read a book in a non traditional format. So this can mean audiobook, ebook, poetry, play, or manga. And I am going to read Orange Volume 2 by Ichigo Takano. The translator is Amber Tamosaitis. This deals with time travel. It's set in a high school in Japan and about 
one boy who took his life and the girl who loved him but wasn't brave enough to tell him that is trying to reverse that um, I, re I like the star writing style and everything in the first volume, but I'm a bit iffy about the concept of um, reversing suicide, because the very point of it is you can't. Uh, so if anything, it should be about like preventing it. But I'll see how this uh, second volume wraps it up and deals with it. The third prompt is to read a book where the gap between original publication and translation spans at least five years. And luckily I have one for this, and that is Bruchstücke by Nanae Aoyama. By the way, I don't speak Japanese, so I'm sorry if I'm butchering all these names. And this was translated by Katja Busson and Frida Lomatsch. There are no English translations uh, of any books by Nanae Aoyama. Uh, there are Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, German, French and Italian ones, so if you speak any of those languages, you can check it out. Uh, if you would translate this, it would probably roughly translate to splinters or something like that. And it is uh, three short stories uh, and it's everyday life, sort of like things like that. And um, I picked this up and some books I'm going to mention after this at a literary event that was... Um, so there's an organization in Frankfurt that is called Litprom and they work at promoting uh, literature from Asia, Africa and Latin America. And they have what is called a Liberatur Prize, which is a literary prize that is awarded specifically to women from these areas every year. And they have um, sort of a short list or long list, if you will, and they have a kickoff event for this every year where they present all the books and you have people fighting for each book and telling you why this book is so awesome and why you should vote for this book. And uh, somebody reads a bit from the books, obviously they can't get all the authors from the different countries, but the person that wins the prize will be at the Frankfurt Book Fair. It's not one of the books that I bought, but um, maybe I'll check it out eventually. Uh, I will link down below to uh, the web page because they also have it in English. So if you are still looking for recommendations uh, for the Women in Translation Month or just uh, interesting books from those countries, you can uh, definitely check that page out. So this is the one that I will read for that prompt. And then I have another book that I picked up at the event as well, and that is Tentacle or Tentacle uh, in English by Rita Indiana. The German translation was done by uh, Angelika Amar. This is uh, from the Dominican Republic and is translated from Spanish. It is available in English. I first was introduced to Rita Indiana through the series Orange is the New Black because they play a song of hers at one point, so I have her CD and uh, when I saw this pop up on booktube I, I was like, is that the same person that is the singer? Um, it must be, it's the same country, it seems oddly specific otherwise. And so it is the same person, so I think it will be really cool to read a book by her uh, since I like her music. And this is supposed to be like set in the dystopian near future and basically really weird. The guy who is um, describing this book and trying to sell it to the audience is sort of like, you need to vote for her so she can come and I can ask her what this book actually means. So it seems really crazy, but he made it sound really good. So I picked this one up. Another one that I picked up, but I won't be reading for Women in Translation Month because I have it in the original, is Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, which was also nominated. And I was never really interested in it. I know it was uh, nominated for a bunch of important prizes, but it really didn't strike me as that interesting for some reason. So this is a retelling of Antigone set in modern times. It uh, is uh, about family who lives in London, uh, but has, I think, Pakistani background. And father was a terrorist. And now the brother joins ISIS, but then he wants to get out and come back. And it's about the decisions that the family makes. Uh, I'm not going to read this this month. Uh, I still wanted to quickly talk about it because in connection with the prize, it was one of the nominees. And it made it sound really interesting and they read a bit of it. And even the German translation, it sounded amazing. So before I talk about the last book for my Women in Translation Month, I still want to talk about Litprom because I also was at another event uh, the beginning of July uh, that was hosted by them and that was an event with Madeleine Tien uh, who wrote uh, Do Not Say We Have Nothing which made the rounds on booktube so I'm not going to talk about it in detail here uh, and her 
partner, uh, Ravi Haj, I picked up his book, The Newest Game at the Reading. And they, these two are in Berlin right now. And uh, they came to for an event to Frankfurt. And uh, it was really interesting. Uh, Madeleine Tien was in, I mean, they were both really nice. And Madeleine Tien was very, very thoughtful in the answers she gave. And always when she got a question, she, th she thought about it for a moment deliberately before she answered. And it was just really interesting. And uh, of course, this one I owned before, she was kind enough to sign it to Daniel and me, as was Ravi Hash, who by the way I had never heard of before. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, this is the story of uh, two childhood friends, Bassam and George, growing up in war-torn Beirut and one wants to leave as they grow up and wants to get out of the country and is like doing smaller crimes to get the money together whereas the other one sort of becomes this powerful underground figure and at some point they apparently clash again and uh, it's about what happens then. It sounds fascinating. I'm not planning to read this in August but uh, since they were in connection with Lit Prom I still wanted to mention them quickly. The last one I want to read for the Women in Translation Month is A Finn Family Moomin Troll by Tove Jansson. This, uh, if you don't know what the Moomins are, they are these sort of magical creatures that live in Moomin Valley. I watched the cartoons when I was younger, but I've never read the books. Uh, these are translated from the Finnish by Elizabeth Porch. This is the English version. Uh, they come with a lovely little map inside. They have beautiful end papers and cute, cute little illustrations. I hope the camera picks that up. And yeah, this is just stories about the movements, so I'm excited for this one. I also plan to read some shorter texts by persecuted authors. If I will pick these up, I will either talk about them in a wrap-up in more detail, which authors I read and by whom they were translated. Uh, there's a couple of them in there. And uh, maybe I'll make a separate video about that. We'll see. And I might also pick up Ice by Anna Kevin, or I will pick it up because... Um, Mark and I will buddy read this, hopefully very slowly, because <laughs> uh, as you can see I have learned nothing from July. I For July I made a TBR that was unrealistically long for the busy month I had and I have now done the same for August, because August is extremely busy as well. Uh, we will be in Amsterdam next weekend meeting with Mark, which is really exciting. Um, and also meeting up uh, with some other friends from England, uh, my best friend, uh, Birgit, and uh, yeah, so that, and her boyfriend Mark, who is also very nice, so two Marks actually, and yeah, so we will do that the weekend after we will be at my sister's, because she got married during Easter, but she wants to celebrate again, so they have like a little wedding celebration with friends and stuff, because the other one was a more intimate ceremony, and then the weekend after we have friends uh, that are coming to visit. So there's really not a lot of reading time, there's not a lot of filming time. I'm trying to pre-film some stuff and we'll see how it goes. There are also some other things in happening in August. There is a Light in August read-along uh, hosted by Brian from Bookish and Alan from Big Heart Books and Classics. Uh, I own some other Faulkner books. Uh, I don't own this one so I won't be joining in but uh, do check them out and uh, check out the read-along. Maybe you want to join in. Um, Alan is also buddy reading with Dennis uh, over at Intellectual Reads, Berlin Alexanderplatz by Alfred Döblin. Again, would love to read it, have it on my shelf, but just like with all these books I have to be sort of realistic. Uh, there was no Dementia in Literature video in July because I got so busy. I hope I can rectify this in August. If so, I will talk about Paco Roca's uh, Wrinkles, which is a graphic novel. I will have to see though if the publisher permits me to show some of the pages because if I can't show the pages uh, I can't go into detail about the book and that would really be the point of the video so we'll see. I'm gonna stop here. Uh, this video got probably way longer than I wanted it to. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to have time again hopefully to watch more videos um, and comment on other people's channels and yeah everything will be linked down below so check anything out that interests you. Bye guys! <laughs>